Hi, everyone. We are joined by Ernesto Tito Mercado, who is getting ready for his upcoming fight, April 5, against the near Barrio. This is going to be a big one for him. He's headlining on the zone, a Red Owl boxing show. And Ernesto, you're, you're, uh, you're coming off a 2023 Prospect of the Year campaign where you beat the likes of Hank Lundy and Jeremiah Nakatia. And guys, Devin Haney has fought, but now you're getting under the bright lights. And this is a, another great opportunity for you on the zone. Uh, what is that like? Because I know you've been trying to graduate to the main stage uh, for the longest time. I think to me, um, I don't really feel no type of pressure. I know a lot of people, when they get to the big lights, they start to feel pressure. Uh, it's really not that case for me. I think it's just finally time now for the whole world to kind of see me now. And um, I'm excited for it. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity on the zone, which obviously all the hardcore boxing fans follow. And it's going to be a good opportunity for you to get in front of that audience and show your skills, show why everyone has been high on you throughout the last few years. Uh, are you looking to really steal the show and make a statement the way you have in all your previous fights? Of course, you know, um, obviously I have a consistent track record, right? I mean, if you look through my record of, you know, not only performing, but knocking these guys out. And um, I plan to keep doing the same thing, you know, on the big lights and in front of everybody so they can see, uh, you know, what Tito Mercado is capable of. And like you said, why everybody's high on me. Mm -hmm. A lot of promoters have reached out to you, started conversations about potentially signing you to a deal. Uh, what made you choose Red Owl for this new opportunity? Um, I mean, they just gave me a good opportunity, man, to headline on, on the zone, you know, from my first, you know, televised car to be headlining. And, you know, they've been um, great to work with. You know, um, Red Owl is a great promotional company and they're they're doing their thing. And um, I'm just excited to be a part of it, man, for them to give me the opportunity to, you know, not only headline and, and for them to have the confidence, you know, to to make me the headliner and know that I could uh, put on a great show for them and, you know, do all those, all those type of things. Um, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, man, April 5th, it's already around the corner. Yeah. Well, what do you know about your opponent? Denier um, I know, yes. Um, my fault. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, I, I was just uh, referencing his name, Denier Barrio. Yeah, no. Um, I know he's a tough guy. I know he wants to come in there and uh, knock your head off. I seen him. I seen a couple of his highlights with uh with Ryu, and he gave him a good fight. I think he even hurt him a couple of times in uh one of those rounds. So I know he's a tough guy. I know he's gonna come in there. You know, obviously to win. He's not gonna go there to you know just receive a paycheck. So we're expecting a, a tough and sturdy guy. And um. Like I said, uh, he, and he's never been stopped. So that's something that we're going to try to do and um, make a statement on that point. Mm -hmm. Four out of your last five fights, they've lasted two rounds or less. Uh, you, you had your first unanimous decision win last year as well, too. But, I mean, you're, you're taking care of these guys in short order. Uh, the, the, big one, the big wins last year were against Jeremiah Nakatia in November and Hank Lundy in April, you fought five times, four of them ended in knockout. Um, but are you trying to get some more rounds under your belt at this point, or you don't mind the first round knockouts? Um, man, I would, I would love to get more rounds in. You know, I think um, it's been a blessing and a curse to be able to knock these guys out right away because uh, obviously, one, I want the more experience, I want the rounds, but also, too, I don't get uh, I don't get the full fulfillment out of the whole training camp that I, you know, I busted my butt off and to knock a guy out in two rounds. Sometimes it's cool, but I wanted to hurt a guy a little longer. You know, I feel like all the all the work that I did, I want to I want to make them suffer a little bit more, like I did throughout the whole camp. So, but don't get me wrong, I think it's be definitely been fun, and you know, to have that type of ability to knock these guys out and and to make the fans um excited and, and still want to tune in because I'm I'm an exciting type of fighter. I think that's great. I mean, you talk about the blessings and the curse. I think the blessing is it keeps you highly active. I mean, you fought in November against Nakatia. You were trying to get a fight in January. I know that one got uh, canceled uh, last minute because uh, 360 Promotions couldn't find the right opponent for you. You tried to get back in there two weeks later. You, your opponent blew weight considerably uh, the day of the weigh-in. And then you found another opponent the week after that, a, a stay busy fight in Tijuana. What, what is your mindset like to, to just, lo looks like you're looking for a fight every weekend. Yeah, no, I'm trying to. I think that's the difference. I think that's going to be a big difference between me and a lot of these guys, especially in my division 140. 
I like to stay active. And I think the more you get in the ring, obviously, the more you're going to develop. Obviously, if you're working on things, and I think uh, that that's going to definitely put me ahead of all these guys. I think once it gets time to for me to fight those Devin Haney's and and all, I think the activity and and you know the way I've been handling these guys, I think is going to show. And I think you know it's going to be uh, it's going to be shutouts. You know when I get in there with these champions, and, I, and a lot of my people are going to think that way. But you know once they give me once they see me in the ring with them, it's going to they're going to see it. Mm -hmm. What what do you think is going to allow for you to? get that breakthrough opportunity that you're looking for to fight a top 15 contender to fight a former world champion to fight even a world champion what do you think you need to do to get there do you think you need to look vulnerable on purpose so these guys can think you're 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 not as uh, much of a monster as uh, people think you are I mean, I think for starters, I think my stop knocking dudes out within the first and second round. I think I think that might that might help out a bit. But um, no nah, man, I think I gotta do things, you know, the way that they're supposed to be done by a book, right? I'm gonna try to, you know, become mandatory for a lot of these guys so I can force them to fight. You know, obviously, not a, they don't always go as, as planned, right? There's a lot of mandatory that still never got their world title shot. But uh, I have a lot of faith, and I know that you know if I keep knocking on the door, eventually, I'll, I'll, somebody's gonna open it. So I'm just waiting for my chance. Mm -hmm. There's some big fights on the calendar already for 140 pounds. Uh, none bigger right now than Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. That fight was announced uh, last month, but so much has happened uh, in the weeks and days since, specifically around the enigmatic behavior of Ryan Garcia. Uh, just curious, what, what are your thoughts on the entire situation? And do you think he's a fighter who should be fighting right now? Uh, I don't think it should. I don't think it's a fighter that should be fighting. To be honest with you, at least not in this type of magnitude of a fight. You know, a big title fight is. I think you should take it a little more seriously. But, um, you know, I think if it's if it's just a, a plot to you know build up the fight, I think. I mean, I guess he's doing great in his own way. I don't know how the criticism is going from, and you know, in that sense, you know, there's other guys like Mayweather who did it with trash talking or Rollie with the trash talking, right? But he's taking kind of a different route to it, and you know, and if it sells, I mean, you know, kudos to him. But um. I think he should stay more focused on the training for the fight because Devin Haney, don't get me wrong, he's, he's still world champion and he knows what he's doing. So I don't think he's just going to be able to land that lucky left hook that he that he think, that he he has. Mm -hmm. How do you see that fight unfolding? Uh, You know, from what I've seen, you know, Ryan Garcia is, you know, is, you know, little bits of training camps and the way he's been acting. I think uh, I think Devin Haney shuts him out, I'm going to be honest with you. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he stops some late rounds too. Maybe, you know, like the 10th, 11th round or, you know, maybe 9th, 10th, 11th rounds. So I think he might maybe be able to stop him. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of uh, envisioning a systematic breakdown at that point. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, from his last fight, too, well, actually, that was not Ryan's last fight, but with Javante, we know that, you know, Ryan's subject to, to quitting in a fight. So uh, regardless of the body shot or not, I feel like he could have got up. You know, as a fighter, you know, regardless, you could still get up. And um, I think he has that in his, in, his, uh, in, his, in his blood. So I think, you know, if Devin Haney does what he has to do, I think there's a, there's a chance that, he, that he's able to stop him. Mm-hmm. I know you're high on yourself and uh, the future that uh, is in store for you, but you know, right now the champions are Teofimo Lopez, Devin Haney, Subriel Matias, Rolando Romero, of course. Who do you think is the best 140-pound fighter in the world right now? I think, uh, you know, for a while I was saying Teofimo, but I think it's probably Devin Haney right now. I think he's just uh, – I think he's really active. I think he's – um. He's shown a lot of improvements. He's been, you know, beating these guys. You know, his last performance with Regis looked real good. I obviously, but I do think that was a a style perfectly made for him in that sense. But um, I think he's probably the most polished one out of all of them. Teal has a lot of off nights, so I can't really give him that one. Even though I think he's skillful as well, he just has too many off nights for me to consider him as the best one. Mm -hmm. What about Subriel Matias? Not a lot of people talk about him, but you know, he just signed with Matchroom. It looks like he's going to fight Liam Paro next. Uh, do you think he's the boogeyman of the division? I don't think he's the boogeyman. You know, I, if they offer me that type of fight, I'll take him heartbeat. I think his style is perfectly suitable for mine. You know, he's just a, you know, I'll be honest, maybe a lot of, a reason a lot of my guys want to fight him is because he's just a rugged, you know, tough guy. You know, he's going to, he's going to be there the whole night. Uh, obviously, if, you know, what a power puncher, you know, we we don't know because after so many shots, you can only take so much, right? But um, I think, I think what really doesn't, uh, make him get those fights is one he's not marketable you know not a lot of people really know him unless you're a boxing fan and and I think from what I heard I, I heard they've been lowballing a lot of people to fight him so I think it's kind of a 
a high risk, low reward type of fight. So I think that's why a lot of people avoid him. Not not so much in the sense that, you know, he's a dangerous fighter, which he is. But, you know, when you're offering, you know, a world champion type of fight, you know, a low reward, it's kind of, it doesn't really make it worth it. Mm -hmm. What do you think you have to do in order to get a, a series of opponents at this stage of your career who are going to help build you up one after another? Obviously, you have another test April 5, but I'm sure you're after the big names. What do you think you need to do in order to get those big names and maybe gain some momentum like the likes of Devin Haney have and Teofimo Lopez have by putting together a, a, a series of names that uh, are, are credible and to and, and how they reach to where they are today? Um, That's horrible, man. You know, there's a lot of fights that, you know, been offered to me. I'm not sure if you heard about the fight that was offered to me in January, but uh, for Arnold Barboza, Golden Boy offered me the fight. I was happily, willingly to, you know, ready to accept the fight. And, you know, I was ready to sign the contract. Last minute, they told me Team Barboza turned it down. So it's 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 a little hard. You know, I, I feel like I can do everything in my power. You know, obviously, I want to get those big fights in. But a lot of these guys don't like to fight no more. Or a lot of them want to pick and choose their fights. So it's going to be a little hard. But I'm going to do my best. You know, like I said, I'm going to keep fighting, keep staying active. And and like I tell my father all the time, when, when they offer me opponents, I said, I don't care who I fight. Give me the best one, obviously. But whoever signs the contract first, I'm cool with it. So that's the type of fighter I am. And like I said, I'm going to just keep doing my business. I think once I keep, like I said, knocking on the door, eventually somebody's going to open it and I'm going to be able to get my, my opportunity. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Arnold Barboza, he's supposed to be on the co-main event for the April 20 show. He's actually even the standby opponent in case something happens to either side for Haney and Garcia. You know, you're fighting in April too. Do you, what needs to happen in order for a Arnold Barboza fight to happen sometime later this year? I know you said those conversations started in January, but why not later this year? What What do you think, uh, what's maybe a consolation you'd be make, willing to make in order for this fight to happen? I mean, it don't matter to me. You know, if they want me to have a belt or something, you know, I'm not sure if it's, you know, too much of a high risk because I know he's been wanting those fights with Teofimo and, you know, those guys like that. I don't know if it's too much of a high risk. So, I mean, if I had to go get a belt so we could go for, like, a title eliminator, me and him, that's what, I'll, that's what I'm willing to do. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm willing to make do whatever I got to do to make these fights happen. So, um, there's no telling the future. It may be happen, you know, the next fight from now. You never know. You know, we both come out healthy from these fights. We may be able to make it happen after. Golden Boy might reach out again. So, uh, like I said, boxing is always a sport that you, you can never tell. So, but, you know, I would like to get in the ring with him, hopefully, this year. Yeah, Golden Boy also has Jose Ramirez. Um, right. Uh, former world champion. Uh, I believe he's uh, getting ready to fight April 27. If all okay. signs uh, are pointing in the right direction, uh, another fight on the boxing calendar. Uh, out of nowhere, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I, I know you. You grew up watching Mike Tyson, and uh, you saw yeah. the highlights probably on YouTube at at that point of your life. But I'm just curious, as a professional fighter. Uh, what are your thoughts on that level of a fight? Um, obviously, uh, I think it's a it's a it's a circus, right? I think it's a it's a it's a like I said, it's a circus show. But um, you know, obviously, I'm I'm gonna be rooting for Mike. Mike's obviously a real boxer, and you know, I'm rooting for Mike. But um, I don't know, man. The thoughts of a I don't know how Michael. I know Mike's like I I know over fifty, right? For sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't see a fight. I don't know how that makes sense. I don't know how they would let a guy like Mike. Regardless of his, you know, uh, resume, you know, fight like that. I'm, I'm, I was hearing rumors though they're gonna do 18 ounce gloves and headgear. I'm not sure if that's true. If that is, then I guess, you know, I guess it'll be fun to the, the casual, you know, the casual people that watch, you know, those type of things. But um, I don't know, man. I, I don't really think too much of it. I think Jake Paul at this point is a clown. You know, from what he's saying, he wants to take it seriously and stuff like that. So when he does stuff like that, it kind of throws people off. Mm -hmm. But if the call came, would you want to fight on the undercard? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it would be, I think, uh, I think that would be great publicity for me. I think there'll be a lot of people watching it, right? Regardless, people are still going to tune into it, even if they say they're not going to watch it. Everybody's going to tune into it. And I think that would be great. I think I got a lot of exposure from there. And I think uh, I'll be able to steal the show from that fight. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your fight April 5 once more. Uh, what are you looking to, to prove, not only to yourself, but some of your fans that you've built over the last year or so? Uh, what kind of a statement are you looking to make? What does the perfect fight look like for you? 
Um, for sure in a knockout or stoppage. You know, this guy has never been stopped before. He's known for making, you know, top fighters look bad. Like I said, Ryu, he made him look bad. Um, for sure, stoppage or a knockout. And, and just proving that, you know, I could do what I've been doing under the bright lights too. You know, I think that's going to be a big one. And just to show the fans, like I said, a lot of these guys, when they get under the bright lights, they kind of fold. And I want to be able to show that I'm consistent and I'm, and I'm here really to make noise. So I think if I'm able to, you know, achieve not only looking great, which I know I will, our preparation is going great. Um, and getting that stoppage to knockout, I think it's going to just show that, you know, Tito's, Tito's a real dangerous threat like everybody thinks I am. Well, we're, we're looking forward to finding out April 5 on the zone, headlining the Red Owl promotion show. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to heading out in Houston, uh, fighting outside of California, uh, yeah. where, you, where you've made a name for yourself. Uh, good luck to you the rest of training camp. Uh, I, I know you and your father, Neto, are training hard in Pomona and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, what April 5 looks like for you. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate it.